Welcome back to the Ask Judge Man series. Today we are going to discuss what happens when multiple trigger effects meet their activation conditions at the same time. This is often referred to as SEGOC in Yu-Gi-Oh! forums and Facebook groups. My name is Benji and this is the Legacy Crusaders YouTube channel and our goal is to help you misplay less and win more. Be sure to subscribe and leave a comment down below to potentially have your questions answered in a future episode. We're going to start off by discussing a common scenario which takes place in the current metagame, which is one player using Salaman Great has Sunlight Wolf in their extra monster zone, and has a set copy of Solomon Great Roar, while the opponent Link summons Nightmare Phoenix, but it is co-linked to the Sunlight Wolf. Both Nightmare Phoenix and Sunlight Wolf will have trigger effects met, and we want to understand how this chain will resolve, as well as what options are available to both players. Since a Phoenix was summoned, we'll assume that they are the turn player, which means, of the two trigger effects that are in play, it must be the first of the effects to be put onto the chain. Assuming they choose to activate it, the turn player will discard a card and select the set Solomon Great Roar to be destroyed. At this point, the opposing player can choose to activate the effect of Sunlight Wolf to add a fire monster from their graveyard to their hand, assuming there is currently one in the graveyard. But they have also met the activation timing for Solomon Great Roar, and could activate it to negate the effect of Nightmare Phoenix to destroy it. So the real question is, can the Solomon Great player use both effects, or is it only possible to use one of the effects? These outcomes are based on a paragraph that can be found in the Other Rules section of the rulebook, and is labeled, When Multiple Cards Are Activated Simultaneously, and reads as follows. If effects of Speed Spell 1 cards, like trigger effects, are activated at the same time, they will result in a special chain. This chain is made starting with the turn player's mandatory effects. If there is only one effect, that will be chain link 1. If there are two or more effects, the turn player can build the chain starting with their mandatory effects in any order. Then the opponent continues the chain with their mandatory effects in any order. Afterwards, the turn player adds their optional effects in any order. And finally, the opponent adds their optional effects in any order. So in this scenario, both players have one optional trigger effect that is activated, and there are two possible outcomes for this scenario that make sense. So the first possibility is that after Nightmare Phoenix activates his Chain Link 1, which it will be because they are the turn player, Sunlight Wolf can activate his Chain Link 2, but it must be activated as Chain Link 2 in response to Nightmare Phoenix because it is a trigger effect and cannot be chained to a speed spell 2 or higher effect such as Solomon Great Roar, which is a counter trap making it speed spell 3. If they choose to use the effect of Sunlight Wolf, they will no longer be able to negate Nightmare Phoenix with Solomon Great Roar as it must be chained to the card that you wish to negate, which would now be Sunlight Wolf, if it is used as Chain Link 3. Since this is not a choice they would most likely make, uh, Roar kind of misses its timing to activate because of how the chain was built. You can find more information on cards missing the timing in the video that is going to be linked above. The other possibility is that the Solomon Great player can choose not to activate the effect of Sunlight Wolf, because it is an optional trigger effect, and choose to activate Solomon Great Roar as Chain Link 2 instead, at which time they can no longer activate the effect of Sunlight Wolf as it is Speed Spell 1, and cannot be changed to a Counter Trap. The next question comes from Ariel Sanchez, which says, Cyber Dragon Core plus Cyber Dragon Veer equals Chain Block? Question mark. And this is currently relevant to multiple decks, and it is a very similar interaction that occurs in different decks that are currently being played. So essentially, this is going to be the same question as what happens if I normal summon Neo Space Connector and I chain Blue Mountain Butter Spy? Can I avoid getting ashed? Or if I summon Salomon Great Baylinks, can I act and activate its effect to search the field spell? Can I activate Salomon Great Gazelle to avoid being ashed on the search for the field spell? Or even more complicated, when the Gazelle hits the field and is summoned in that scenario, can I then activate uh, Salomon Great Fowl to avoid the Gazelle getting ashed? And the answer to all of these questions is yes. All three of these scenarios allow you to chain block a card from being ash blossomed. And it all has to do with what the rulebook referred to as this special chain and the fast effects timing chart telling us how trigger effects work and what happens when a chain resolves. Let's say we start our turn by normal summoning Spinny, and we use it to link summon Baylinx. We can activate the effect of Baylinx to search the field spell, as well as the effect of Gazelle to special summon it from hand, because both triggers were met, and both are optional trigger effects. So we can choose the order in which we make our chain in this case, so we can make Baylinx chain link 1 and Gazelle chain link 2. Now our opponent is not allowed to activate an Ash Blossom in response to the effect of Baylinx, because the most recent effect activated in the chain was that of Gazelle. Once Gazelle has been summoned, we look at the fast effects timing chart, and it tells us that when a chain resolves, we check to see if any other trigger effects have been met. Because the Gazelle has been summoned, its trigger effect has been met to allow it to send the card from the deck to the graveyard. But additionally, the Fowl in our hand has also had its trigger effect met, and that you can actually summon the Fowl from our hand. So we can choose to chain link the order of those effects, where Gazelle is chain link 1 to send the card to the graveyard, and Fowl is chain link 2 to summon it from hand. Meaning the Ash Blossom that would be activated as chain link 3 would not be responding to a card that meets its requirements. So you can't actually activate an Ash Blossom in this scenario. So in both cases we've managed to chain block, which is of course an unofficial term, but we have managed to protect our cards from being ashed. 
Another question that would be asked is if you can activate both Fowl and Gazelle in order to block each other's summon from being negated, because both of their triggers are met at the same time when the Bailinx is summoned. The Bailinx is summoned, which means Fowl's trigger is met, and the Finny is sent to the graveyard, meaning its trigger is met. So can you activate Bailinx Chain Link 1, Gazelle Chain Link 2, and Fowl Chain Link 3? Strategically, this is not necessarily a better play, but the answer is also that you cannot do that. There is an official ruling, it's not in the rulebook, that says that if a trigger effect is met in the hand, you can only activate one during that chain. And this begins from when Gores, Battle Fader, and Trigodia were cards. All these battle traps that if you were able to activate multiple copies of them, at the same time, there was some sort of an issue. I'm not sure what the issue was, but it has been ruled since that you cannot activate more than one hand trigger effect in the same chain. Although, as long as there is a hand trigger effect met, you can activate one in this special chain that occurs at the beginning of the Fast Effects timing chart. If you played Pendulums during the format where Astral Graph Sorcerer was legal and Chronograph Sorcerer was legal, you would also have been aware that you were only allowed to activate one of them when a card was destroyed. But this is because of this same exact ruling. You can only activate one trigger effect in the hand per chain. And finally, I want to discuss that there is a difference between OCG and TCG rulings, and you might have noticed them on YGO Pro. And on YGO Pro, if you were to summon the Bailinx, your opponent would be given the opportunity to respond with Ash Blossom in response to the activation of Bailinx before you'd be allowed to activate the Gazelle in hand. And this is just the way their fast effects timing chart works. If you have a card that can respond, whose timing is also met, priority passes back and forth from one player to the other. This doesn't apply here in the TCG, so if you were wondering why it seems to that this particular set of rules that I've mentioned today don't seem to work on YGO Pro, it's because the creators of YGO Pro follow all OCG rulings, and that's just something that doesn't work the same way here. Similarly, there's a ruling in the TCG uh, North America that's different from everywhere else in the world, and that has to do with when a trigger effect is met, but a card leaves the location where its trigger would activate. For example, if you were to activate Call of the Haunted, targeting a Cosmo Dark Destroyer, and it would get Mystical Space Typhoon, or the other way around. The Mystical Space Typhoon would be activated, followed by Call the Haunted on the Dark Destroyer. The Dark Destroyer would come back to, from the graveyard, then it would go to the graveyard, and it would never get an opportunity to activate its effect on field to destroy a monster, despite that it was summoned, so it did actually meet its activation condition. But that's just a difference between North America and everywhere else, and it makes it a little hard to use something like YGO Pro as a practice program, which it is my favorite practice program so it is a little upsetting, but the game has to be programmed to work one way, and that's just the way it's been programmed to work. Again, if you'd like to help choose the next topic to be covered on the Ask Judge Man series, make sure to leave a comment down below and suggest a topic or ask a question. Subscribe to be notified when that video goes live. Click the link to the playlist of all the other episodes of Ask Judge Man so that if there was an episode you wanted to see it, it may already exist. I'll see you next time.